Welcome to episode 7 of Graham's Journey. You may have noticed from my thumbnail that um, I've issued a warning that Graham's Journey may end suddenly. Now a lot of people put very enticing thumbnails up to try and attract people to their videos and that's called clickbaiting and quite often you can be attracted to a certain video only to find out that the message in the thumbnail was just a trick to get you interested and they're not going to talk about that particular subject hardly at all but in my case uh, the warning is genuine um, I've got to try and stop saying arms. Really bad at that. I may have to end these episodes after this, but hopefully not. But it may happen, not because I choose to stop doing videos, but because I won't be able to, because I won't be around. Now, the reason for that is that last, well, my last episode was episode 6, and I was talking about gout and pseudo gout. And during that time while I was doing that video, I had to go to the hospital, Green Lane Hospital here in Auckland, to have an echocardiogram. Now, I had, as you know, if you've watched previous episodes, I had a heart failure episode back in April 2019, just before COVID struck, and I had a triple bypass done. Most unpleasant experience. I don't recommend it to anyone. Anyway... After that, I did get to see a cardiologist who reviewed what I was doing, but since then, I've moved from what's called North Shore Auckland over to more Central Auckland, which is where I am now, in Blockhouse Bay. And for some reason, the hospital system here didn't seem to follow me up. And one time when I went to my doctor that I had at the time, I said, it's been a long time since I've heard from the hospital regarding my heart and what's been happening and so she said she would follow up and sure enough I got a phone call from the hospital and I had to go and see my cardiologist and at that well it was a, a different cardiologist one that's in, in this area and when I went to that cardiologist I I parked my car in the car park and I had to get from the car park up to the room where the cardiologist was in the hospital on the first floor and just getting from the car park and into the hospital I was feeling very breathless and at the time they were still worried about uh, COVID-19 and we're talking about this year, which is 2023. Um, I think that was 2023. It might have been 2022, because it was a while ago. And, of course, they were asking everybody if they were having breathing problems as you went into the hospital. And if you did, they would check you for COVID and all that. So I didn't tell the entrance people, the security guards, that I was having trouble breathing because I didn't want to go through all the COVID problems because I knew I didn't have COVID. I knew that I was having heart problems. So anyway, I made it all the way up to the cardiologist and he checked me out and he couldn't actually find any problem with my heart or why I was having breathing problems, whether it was asthma or whether it was my heart. Normally, if you have asthma, they, they have a listen to your lungs. And if you've got asthma, you'll they will hear a wheezing sound. If you're having heart problems, it means that you'll have 
uh, fluid in the bottom of your lungs caused by your heart not pumping enough oxygen or enough blood which gets you oxygen into your lungs and they will hear a, a gurgling sound which is the fluid in your lungs but he didn't discover either so all very confusing for me what really is going on what's causing my breathlessness anyway he gave me some drugs that made me worse <laughs> Uh, I had more breathing problems and I stopped taking that drug because it just made me worse and I went back to my doctor and my doctor gave me asthma preventative medication which seemed to help a lot so that's what I thought was my breathing problems was asthma but then I got a phone call from the hospital saying have I had you know, a recent echocardiogram done on my heart. And I said, no, I haven't heard from the hospital hardly at all for a couple of years. So they said, well, we'll book you in for an echocardiogram. And that happened on August the 15th of this year, 2023. And a month later, well, not quite a month, September the 5th, I got called into the hospital to discuss the results of the echocardiogram. And the first thing that happened, which was a little bit disturbing, was the lady that saw me, so the, the male cardiologist obviously disappeared, probably gone to Australia, I don't know. But anyway, the lady that I got, the first thing she said was, I'm a... Um, trainee cardiologist well that was a little bit disturbing because I know when you get a trainee checkout girl at the supermarket things don't always go right but anyway uh, she was very uh, how's the word blunt with me and the first thing she says is you've got very high cholesterol levels and I said yes I know that's because I'm following the carnivore diet and when you follow a low carb diet like a like a keto diet or carnivore diet there is a very strong tendency for your um, cholesterol to go high which is not a problem but for a cardiologist they consider it to be a problem and of course the first thing she did was try and talk me into taking statins, which I'm dead against. I won't take any statins because statins actually block coenzyme Q10, which is an enzyme which is designed to give energy to your muscles. And if you're not getting it, you're not going to get energy in your muscles. And that's what causes cramps when you're having, if you're taking statins a lot. Just move my camera over a bit. I like to be more central. Um, so, if statins are blocking coenzyme Q10, which also causes cramps in your muscles, it just so happens that your heart is also a muscle. So, it seems to me like a doctor issuing you, prescribing you statins. And if they don't also prescribe you coenzyme Q10 tablets, which they never do, that's to me is tantamount to attempted murder. But anyway, that's another subject. So that was the first conflict I had with this trainee cardiologist. And the next thing she said was that uh, according to my cardio echogram, well, echocardiogram, I think that's the way you meant to say it. She said that my heart is now pumping at a lot less than it used to. Now, it was explained to me when I, after my triple bypass, the cardiologist I had then said that a, a normal heart, every time it pumps, it pumps 60% of the blood that's in your heart out to the rest of your body or your lungs uh, but 
in my case, my heart is only pumping 30% of the blood out. So basically my heart is performing at half the potential that it should be doing. Some people can pump more than 60%, some can put, get up to 75%, um, but in my case I'm only 30%. Well, this uh, trainee cardiologist explained to me that my heart is now only pumping 20% of my blood out each time. Now, when your heart is only pumping 20%, there's not enough blood getting pumped to my lungs. So uh, that's why if I have any sort of exertion at all, like walking up steps, uh, I'm not getting enough blood going to my lungs so I'm not getting enough oxygen in my blood to be able to perform just basic exercise. However when I'm just walking around or sitting around, which I, I do a lot of, um, stop saying um Graham, I feel fine. I don't have any problems. I don't have any pains in my chest or tingling feelings down my left arm, is it your left arm? Whatever it is that indicates you're having a heart attack. I don't have any symptoms like that, I just have breathlessness or fatigue. So this trainee cardiologist prescribed me, she wanted me to take certain drugs, which I agreed to, but not statins. And I came away from there and this was about the time that I was doing my last video which was about gout and I really wanted to finish that video about gout which was quite complex and so I kept doing that. I really wanted to also talk about my heart condition but because I was doing the gout video and I had a lot of interruptions and problems doing that video so if you go back, if you haven't watched it, please watch it and share it with anybody that um, may be suffering from gout. Uh, I may have to add something to that gout because of that gout video because I've learned something new about gout since then. But anyway, while I was doing that video, that video I was doing on this, I posted it on September the fifteenth. And my visit to the hospital to see the trainee cardiologist was on the 5th of September. And just after finishing that particular um, gout video, I had, well, during that gout video actually, I was started taking these new drugs because that trainee cardiologist took me off all of the drugs that I was already on completely changed every single one of them to a new set of drugs that she felt would be better for my very serious condition. And it was so serious that she said to me, and she, <laughs> she might have to work on her patient skills because she was very blunt and said that my heart was so bad that I was in serious danger of dying suddenly. Hence the subject of this video is warning. This episode of Graham's Journey may, not this episode, Graham's Journey overall may suddenly end because if I kick the bucket, obviously I won't be doing any more uh, videos on this channel and I don't have anybody arranged to do a follow-up video if I kick the bucket. I don't know if anybody that I know would be able to do it. And you might have noticed that I have an assistant here, um, Bob, and Bob apologizes for not being in previous videos for quite some time because Bob has had a bit of a drinking problem 
and he kept falling off his perch. So, um, because this is my last, it po could possibly be my last episode, um, he's decided to join me and make the effort to stay on his perch. And he's doing very well. He's been sober for quite some time now. So, he's here in support of me. Um, and he's a Kiwi also. And he has a bit of a weight problem, just like me. Fat belly. So we can understand each other's problems. Anyway, September the... I've, I've written down the dates, but I haven't written any notes. Um, September the 20th, um, which was... Oh, by the way, I was talking about doing the gout video. Well, when I finished that gout video... I started these new drugs that the trainee cardiologist gave me and guess what I got another very bad attack of gout and I had to I I knew especially from doing my gout video that these extra drugs that this cardiologist had given me was probably affecting my kidneys and my kidneys were struggling to cope with um, the normal, um, what do you call it? The normal excretion of uric, uric acid um, or oxalates, with whatever the problem is. And so I got another attack of gout. Now, I immediately blamed the one in particular new drugs that I was taking and so I stopped taking that particular drug so it was a choice between having excruciating pain and dying of a heart attack <laughs> quite a difficult choice but excruciating pain won out and I stopped taking the pill and then um, a few days later, I got called back to the hospital because they just this cardiologist said they were going to put me under the care of the heart team. So I've never been looked after by a heart team before. So I didn't quite know what that meant. But anyway, September the 20th, I got called back to... Um, the Green Lane Hospital, which it's called here. And I was expecting to see this same lady again, which I didn't get on too well with. But I got another lady. I think her name was Melissa. It's either Melissa or Melinda. That's some name like that. I can't quite remember. Um, so, oh, I got someone different. But this lady was much nicer, and she didn't try and push statins onto me probably got warned by the other lady not to try and push statins onto me and she was much nicer and she suggested that if I wasn't willing to take that particular drug um, spironolactone I think it's called that I could try just taking half a tablet and see how I go with that so she talked me into taking half a tablet along with another drug which is called Entresto which wasn't giving me any problems it was just the spironolactone that really triggered my gout and as soon as I stopped taking it the gout went away just within a couple of days the gout cleared up just by stopping taking that one drug so I thought okay I'll try half a tablet so I tried half a tablet and I haven't had gout again and then what's my date here um, October the 10th I got called back to the hospital again so they really are worried about me because the heart that's only pumping 20% of the blood they consider at serious risk of having total heart attack or heart failure 
Um, and I think I've explained once before a difference between heart attack and heart failure. Heart attack is when your heart actually stops, uh, usually because of a blockage in your arteries. But heart failure is just where your heart is getting so weak that it just can't pump the amount of blood that it should do. And that's what happened to me in the Philippines. My heart got so weak that it couldn't pump a full amount of blood each time. So the way the heart compensates for not being able to do a full pump is to pump twice as fast. So instead of having 60 beats a minute, you have about 120 or 150 beats a minute. But my heart doesn't seem to be beating extra fast. It's still around the 60 beats per minute. But according to the echocardiogram, which incidentally they can misread, so I hope I haven't been misread, uh, I'm only pumping 15 to 20% of my blood each time. So I went back to the hospital again on October the 10th and I got to see, oh by the way, Melissa wasn't a cardiologist, she was a heart nurse specialist. And I said, well, what's happened to all the cardiologists? Last time I got a trainee cardi cardiologist, and now I'm just getting a heart nurse specialist, of course. Not just a heart nurse, a heart nurse specialist. Wow. Um, anyway, I've been told by my friend John that heart nurse specialists are very good. They really know their stuff. And But it's a bit disconcerting when you have a serious heart problem, and first you get a male cardiologist, then you get a trainee cardiologist, and then you step down another step to a heart nurse specialist. And then, not only that, I get, on October the 10th, I got a different heart nurse specialist. I don't get the same person. So you have to go through the same old routine of saying, no, I don't want to take statins. I'm on a carnivore diet, which, of course, they vigorously oppose. <laughs> as far as I can see, the worst thing you could be doing is eating meat, which is a whole another subject. So my next heart nurse was called Vanessa, and I said, what's happened to all the cardiologists? Have they all gone to Australia? And she says, no, we still have cardiologists, but if you really insist on seeing a cardiologist, uh, you have about a three to six month wait to see one. So so that you don't have to wait so long, um, the heart nurse specialists step into the gap to keep things going. And of course, as she said, you know, in three months time, I might be dead if they didn't see me soon enough. And Vanessa said to me, she... Um, gave me the, what's the word? I hate it when I can't think of a word. Must be that stroke I had back in April. Um, she assured me that I was now be stuck with her and she would be my heart nurse specialist from now on. And sure enough, she is the one <laughs> that I'm stuck with. And she's reasonably nice. Um, she tries not to try and talk about statins and she also tries not to talk about my diet choices because as they always say it's my body it's my choice what I do and don't do however she really wanted me to try not just spirin and lactone which I'm taking half a tablet of she says there's a new drug that she believed would be very helpful for someone with my particular heart condition. And that's called... Sorry, I can't remember the word. I'll just get the box. Hang on. Here it is. It's called... Impa... I hate these long words. Impagliflozin. And the brand name is called Jardians. So I don't know if you can see that. 
it looks back to front to me but I think it comes out correctly when I play it when you play it back so impagla frozen now she explained to me that unfortunately that particular tablet is not yet subsidized by the New Zealand government so that tablet is going to cost me $42 a month and you know she said are you willing to take that and pay that cost and I said well if it's really going to help me yes $42 a month isn't too bad I can afford that it's only just over $10 a week so I won't be buying ice cream <laughs> so that'll be good for me in two ways now I have just to digress slightly I, I said to her I might be able to get uh, wins which is short for what is it short for I can't remember what win stands for but it's the social welfare department in New Zealand oh work and income New Zealand <laughs> I'm not working but I do get an income from wins which is actually just my pension so I'm just a pensioner I'm getting a pension once a month which for me is more than enough I'm I'm not stressed out financially so I could afford the $42 a month but I have also applied to WINS um, for a medical disability to help pay for that $42 a month initially they said no and they said I have to provide receipts so I had to actually buy the drug first and provide a receipt for it to prove how much it cost me I also had to get my doctor to write a very long letter explaining why I had to have this particular pill, why it wasn't subsidised by the government, and are there any alternatives that I can take. And I, my doctor did all that for me, and I've just recently had an email from Wins to say that I will now be getting an extra $42 a month to cover the cost of this new drug so I'm now on this new drug so I'm now taking four different no yeah four different drugs I'm taking clopidogrel <laughs> all these words are so hard to say that's a blood thinner to stop me having another stroke I'm taking Entresto, which helps keep my blood pressure down. I'm taking Empagliflozin, which is meant to help with my low um, production, my low pumping of blood. And Spironolactone, which is another drug. Just to digress slightly, Spironolactone has actually been banned in some countries. <laughs> must be quite bad for you certainly bad for my kidneys um, and of course if your kidneys aren't working properly that's going to increase your blood pressure which is bad for your heart so it seems to be a bit counterproductive is my word for it so anyway November the 9th um, which is not too long ago I went back to see Vanessa again and she was very pleased with my progress. I have to have a blood test every time I go and get these new drugs. And every time I've been to see Vanessa, she's increased the dosage. My Entresto was doubled um, on my first visit to her, and she's doubled it again. So I'm now taking four times the low dose. And every time she increases it, she gets me to do a blood test to see if my kidneys are coping. Unfortunately, all these drugs I'm taking, I have not got gout again, and she's confirmed by the blood test that my kidneys are now coping. Apparently, it takes your kidneys a while to adjust to the new drugs. And she said my kidneys have... I've actually got something going right for a change. <laughs> So, so I have strokes, asthma, 
heart attacks, heart failure. But my kidneys are holding up. So I don't need a kidney transplant. So Bob here, he's very happy about that. Um, so if I get to do more episodes, you will see them because I will do them. And I've gone to see Vanessa again on November the 23rd. And she said that may be the last time that I need to go and see her because I'm now on the full dose of all the drugs that they want me to take to help my very low heart functioning pumping ability. And she said uh, you'll be getting another echocardiogram on February the 15th, 2024. I said, that's a long time. Uh, why can't I have one now? And she said, well, they actually, that was the earliest date that they could get me in because there are 3,000 patients waiting for an echocardiogram. So the New Zealand health system really is struggling to keep up with the demand. There's been a lot of sick people out there. And hopefully our new national government will be able to improve that situation. But I very much doubt it because I don't, nothing really changes when governments change. But that's just my political opinion. But uh, I don't want to get into politics here. I just want to talk about health and Graham's journey, which, as per the warning I just gave, may end suddenly so my friends john and trish have been told about my condition another told another neighbor has told me if you if you're having heart failure turn your outside light on and we'll know that you're in trouble <laughs> well i'd have to be able to make it to the light switch <laughs> but anyway i don't leave my outside light on anymore uh, for that reason and after the first diagnosis of having serious heart problems uh, John tried to ring me but I'd gone to Trisha's place for a cup of coffee and I left my phone behind and of course he tried to ring me and I didn't answer so John panicked and I <laughs> I saw I looked out Trisha's window and saw John rushing past the window to my place so I went out and says oh what are you up to John he says Oh, you're not answering your phone. I thought you were having a heart attack. I said, oh, no, I'm all right. I'm just having coffee at Trisha's place. And then I realized I didn't have my phone with me. So I have to make sure I always have my phone with me in case somebody rings me and I don't answer. They think I'm having a heart attack. So that's my situation at the moment. Um, so I think I will make that the end of episode seven because my videos tend to be way too long and according to my timer I've been rambling on for 33 minutes hard to believe that I can talk for half an hour incidentally before I went on to this medication I couldn't talk for half an hour I'd lose my breath I'd be out of breath and um, so these pills are working I'm I'm not breathless. I do not need to take any um, asthma medication. I've completely stopped the asthma medication, which is good because <laughs> I looked up the side effects of um, Symbicort, which was the, the the puffer that I was taking as an asthma preventative. And um, the side effects was that if you take that Symbicort for a long period of time, it increases your chances of having a, a stroke or a blood clot causing a stroke about 10 times worse. So I'm quite glad that I've stopped taking that because I might have gotten another stroke. So um, that's all for now. Um, Bob says goodbye and thank you, Bob, for your support. And I'll say goodbye now, and I'll say um, 
live long and prosper. I just do that to prove that my left hand is working properly and that I'm fully recovered from the stroke. I just have to get my heart back in order and I have to wait till February the 15th to have another echocardiogram. My heart nurse says that she won't be seeing me again and after that echocardiogram I will actually get to see a proper cardiologist which will be interesting and I just want to add one extra thing is that as I'm, I think I've mentioned in previous episodes I have too much iron in my blood and I've been doing research on what's called hemochromatosis I have, <laughs> I have non-alcoholic steratic hemochromatosis which is a very long word and it's I've actually had my genes tested I'm genetically have genetic hemochromatosis but my research that I've been doing about iron states that anyone who has even slightly elevated iron levels can be at risk of having heart failure because the excess iron can get stored in your heart and cause your heart muscles to weaken and cause heart failure so I mentioned this to my heart nurse and she says, oh, that's just, she doesn't even consider iron. That's out of her, um, what would you call it, not in her purview. It's a fancy word that I've learned from listening to politicians. <laughs> if they don't want to talk about something, they just say, oh, that's not in my purview. So, um Iron levels, she wouldn't even consider what my iron levels were, whether they were good or bad. Um, and yet, from the study that I've done, your iron levels uh, can be critical. And I've, I've viewed other um, YouTube videos done by cardiologists that actually talk about how serious um, high iron levels are. But when I talk to my doctor about iron levels, he says, oh no, your levels within the New Zealand range which is between um, 50 and 450 um, and at the moment my iron levels are around the 360 mark which is you know quite high but even then he said we don't worry about iron levels unless you go over a thousand so <laughs> I'm nowhere near a th although I have in the past been over a thousand I, I was 1154 at one stage which is over a thousand but he says no we're not worried about that and the only cure for hemochromatosis is to have blood taken off you which reduces the amount of iron that's well I can't get that my doctor won't recommend it and the blood I could just go and donate blood but the blood donation people won't accept my blood because they're worried that I'm going to have a heart attack while they're taking the blood off me so a very simple cure I can't get, which is extremely frustrating. So I may do another episode about hemochromatosis or iron overload. Um, I don't know how many people would be interested in that. But anyway, um, live long and prosper. And hopefully there will be an episode 8. So goodbye for now, and isn't that amazing? I've done a whole episode without editing, without stopping, so uh, must be the moral support that I'm getting from Bob. So whatever the cause, I hope you enjoyed this, and please, if you want to make a comment, that's another thing I just want to say, <laughs> I keep adding things. Another thing I want to say is I do get comments from some of my subscribers. I only have five subscribers and some of them do send me comments, but they send me comments via email to my actual address or by messenger or Facebook. Um, but I would really like if anybody does want to make a comment, please comment in the YouTube 
section in the video because my um, videos are not getting many views and I notice other people's videos, especially if they talk about carnivore or iron levels, um, they get thousands of views. And of course, if you get thousands of views, you get monetized by YouTube. And I think the problem is that I have mentioned some subjects that are taboo on YouTube. And if the algorithm rhythm detects that you've been saying what is not considered acceptable by the World Health Organization, who, um, then your YouTube videos will be um, not so much censored, but you will not be promoted like other people's videos. And I've learned that from some other people that are doing videos, and they say that since they've mentioned certain taboo subjects, that or subjects that are not in full harmony with mainstream medical advice, uh, the alg algorithm spot stops your video from being spread. So possibly the only way my videos will spread is by you actually sharing my video with a friend so that somebody else gets to see it. I've only had 18 views of my gout video because I've looked at other gout videos and they have thousands of views even hundreds of thousands anyway that's just my little problem that's not your problem but it would really help if you click the like button even more helpful if you subscribed and even more helpful if you make a comment um, in the YouTube video and uh, you can also click the notification bell which means that if I do another video you'll get notified that this another one of my videos has come but you don't have to do that I don't know if that improves the algorithm or not so that's all so live long and prosper this is Graham over and out and hopefully there'll be another episode thanks very much bye